So these kind of instrument you see generally in a confocal lab, it's a classical sort of instrument. The main core structure is the similar one that you see with the fluorescent microscope. The special thing that is attached to the fluorescent microscope again <laughs> is this uh, light scattering or light scanning box, which is basically having laser scanning unit as well as detection system. Uh, so these are the common kind of you know basic instrument which are available with the confocal microscope. There are some you know earlier or the previous models with the confocal microscope. Uh, these are box shaped structure and nowadays these are obsolete. I am showing it because it is available in our lab. So hopefully during demonstration when you will come for the presentation or for the discussion, maybe you will see this kind of this kind of uh, instrument. And these are some of the images of the same instrument which we got in the last week, I think. So this is, these are some of the images that we took last week actually. And this is just a representation of tumor spheroids. So we grow the cells and we develop a sort of three-dimensional spheroid ball shaped structure of the monolayer culture. And then we try to image them with sort of, it's okay. So we try to image them with uh, various flows and dyes. So the dye which you are seeing at the periphery, it's basically to stain the live cells. So there is a particular stain called as calcine AM, which can stain the live cells, which are showing here. And then there is a red color staining, which is primarily with the dye, which specifically stain the mitochondrial superoxide radicals. So that is the mitosox. And then these are some of the DIC images. And when you combine them together or co-localize them together, you see a clear pattern of periphery is appearing as a green as well as yellow. Yellow color shows the combination of green, green and red. And the middle part is showing you the red color more prominently. So, so this represents your live cells. In the core, maybe it is primarily not the live cells, rather it may be necrotic cells or maybe dead cells. But in those dead cells, at least these kind of morphologies you see, these, these uh, dead cells also have increased level of red fluorescence, which is indicated because of the increase in superoxide radicals. So altogether for defining molecular details of any cellular structure, tissue structure or specimen, you try to use the confocal microscopy. And that is a little bit advantageous because why we use the confocal microscope. So like ma'am explained to you that fluorescent microscopy is used for you know identifying various abnormalities in the clinical specimen. And these are some of the structure. The first represents your uh, human medulla. And the second one is basically stained with a green uh, fluorescent protein. And it's a rabbit muscle fiber. And third one is a, your uh, pollen grain, sunflower pollen. So these are the images which were captured by using fluorescent microscopy. And you can see that there is a very bright illuminated sort of images, but still some of them are appearing as a blurry images. And if, if you see these images, which is taken by the confocal microscope, you see more def refinement in the structural details of the structure. So first one is your more clear picture of the human medulla. Second is your uh, muscle fiber, which are showing striated morphology. And third is the surprisingly that you don't see much detail in the first figure, but in case of figure F, you see more clear core region as well as the envelope region. So which is possible. So if we try to see the difference between these two type of process, we can say that the images can be better resolved by using confocal microscope. And it can also be used for the thicker section that we will discuss later on during the presentation. <clears throat> and third, it can definitely provide us more structural details, which you can see clearly here. So how the confocal does it, that it basically uses certain restriction or certain spatial filters to reject out of light. So because if you have all the light coming together to the detector, you will find images more illuminated, but you will also lose resolution because of the less contrast in that. So we can improve the contrast by rejecting out of, light, out of focus light. So that is the confocal microscope or that is the basis of confocal microscopy. So like ma'am, discussed earlier that by in wide field microscopy, we used to have a, you know, a lamp or light source, which is generally mercury lamp, or maybe, you know, LED bulbs, halogen bulbs, and these emits, you know, various wavelength of light. So that excite uh, that that is transferred or that is focused through a dichroic mirror, 
to the objective lens and then this objective lens focuses onto the specimen and since the light is coming all together to the specimen through this objective lens all the area is illuminated and whatever the light is going back it will be captured by the detector so so the problem is that you have to have all the light coming to the uh, camera or detector and that fluorescent microscopy captures all the out of focus light as well as in focus light so that's why your entire specimen is illuminated all the part of samples which are excited uh, at the same time so you have excitation at the lateral phase as well as the axial phase and and this light will be collected by the camera and this also collect in focus as well as out of focus light so that's why you see glare or blurriness in the white field imaging or white field microscopy and and it is you know not very good in terms of if you are using more thick samples which is greater than 2 micrometer in size sometime it creates problem or maybe not clearly resolve so if you see the confocal microscopy like i mentioned that we need certain restriction to to capture only in focus light so that's why there is a concept of pinhole so pinhole is a you know a special type of aperture or maybe a device which reduces the capturing of out of focus light so the main the main uh, component that includes laser light which is a which provides a collimated beam of light so collimated means it's a pattern of waves like either in the parallel fashion so that it goes to the dichroic mirror and then through objective lens it is focused on a particular point that is called as focal plane and at this particular plane the the fluorophore because this specimen is labeled with a fluorophore which can be antibody labels will with, with alexa fluor or or maybe any specific dye and once the light reaches to a specific uh, focal point then the light that this molecule of fluorophore excited and then after excitation it emits the wavelength of a particular wavelength and then this is captured by your camera and before that there is a pinhole so so the light is coming uh, from the laser focused through the objective to a particular point and then from this point there is a scattering of light but when it goes to the objective lens again it forms a collimated beam of uh, light which is uh, again captured by the camera through the pinhole so this size of the pinhole is a very important if the pinhole size is smaller it will it will take only small amount of light and that is also in focus light and if it is bigger then the illumination will be higher but it will also lose certain resolution so it's always a trade off between opening the size of pinhole versus you know reducing the size of pinhole so all together confocal microscopy provides a very focused um uh, uh focus beam of light onto the plane of the objective and a very small area or you can say point a very point fine point is illuminated and then after this fine point illumination it scan the entire area so first is the point scanning and then this point is taken multiple times in a plane and then eventually you can go deep down also so that you can do the optical sectioning so the beam is focused the energy density is much higher and it emits more light so the focus plane compared to the plane above and below so as a result we see more clear images because of the rejection of the out of focus light and it can be also be used for developing you know or maybe computationally analyzing the optical section so in con in in fluorescent microscopy if you want to achieve more resolution your sample size or sample thickness should be less but either you 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 can do it so suppose if you are dealing with a tissue maybe tumor tissue or whatever tissue um and then if you have a limitation of not having confocal microscope you have to manually or you have to physically sectioning sectionize those uh, slices up to 1 or 2 micron or 3 micron in size and then individually taking pictures or taking images of the fluorescently labeled molecule but if you have the availability of confocal microscope you don't have to do this laborious work rather you can use the same tissue with thickness and then you do the confocal microscopy which will optically sectionize all these things so you do it virtually and computationally you will have all the images stacked to one each other and you will get the three dimensional structure how we will get it i will just show you in a minute so so in general if you see the fluorescent microscopy images with the wide field uh, this is a mouse kidney tissue and it is approximately 15 micrometer in thickness and you see although there are you know various uh, structures are seen but 
clearly there is a blur or there is no not much resolution here compared to confocal microscopy so you can see more clear detail of structural part if you are using confocal in the sense to better you know resolve the images from the uh, fluorescent microscope okay, okay so um, so so the basic principle behind the confocal microscopy is it started i think in 1950s by marvin minsky and he was actually not known for confocal microscopy rather than he is known best known as the founder of artificial intelligence and interestingly he did not publish even a single paper on confocal microscope so that was but but he was interested actually he looked at uh, some of the important organelle structures such as golgi body in human brain and that's why he designed certain setup to reject out of focus light and and the setup was like so this is a laser which is again providing you a you know specific wavelength in a particular fashion and that fashion is called as collimated beam which comes as a parallel light and then it goes again like i mentioned before by through the dichromic mirror uh, and then these these are the basically the beam splitter or beam collector so the same mirror will split the beam and focus it onto the objective lens and again the emitted light will be collected by the same beam and then passing to the uh, detector so that laser is excited and it is giving the light uh, and light is passed through the mirror and then it is focused on the objective lens and this is a specimen so it basically focuses on a single point that is called as in focus plane or the plane of focus and then the light which is emitted from here it will again be passing through the dichroic mirror and then coming to the detector since the pinhole is there which is a smaller in size it will reject out of light focus and only take the light which is basically the similar size of this point so that similar the point is called as diffraction limited spot at the spot or the point where you are actually illuminating your sample and then collecting the light which is coming out from that sample through the pinhole and then photo multiplier because these are the multiplication of your signal in electrical form and then coming back to the digital format so that you can see and since this is a plane one point plane and this plane can be changed by changing the location of the scanning mirror so once you change the scanning mirror again the focus will be at a different point if you change again then focus will be at a different point but it is in the same plane or so point so in the same area at different points so by that way it can scan the entire area so this idea was achieved by use of illumination and detection side pinhole aperture in the same conjugate plane making them confocal so that is the basic principle behind confocal and then if you want to learn more about this so this is just a you know more defined understanding so that so this is a laser when it comes as a particular light so laser can be found in a particular wavelength we can call it as a mercury laser as well as blue laser green laser red laser so they they emit specific light um, and then this light is passed through a dichroic mirror which allows them focus to the objective lens and that this objective lens focus again to a specific specimen on a particular point and from there on the excited light after emission it converts into so the red so i think blue is converted into the green color as emission and only the pinhole size based on the pinhole size only in focus light is collected so so a collimated laser beam which is you know around 488 nanometer in this case for example uh, it is again focused by the beam splitter to the objective lens and coming to the specimen and from there on it basically excite again and emit uh, from the fluorophore and it is coming back to as a collimated beam in a parallel fashion and those out of focus light because you see gray color light these are the out of focus light which will not be detected by the detector only the in focus light will be detected so specific restriction on collection of light that is the key of this confocal microscopy and that contribute to the improve in the resolution of the overall image and these uh, the point at where this focus or light to the focus is is called as diffraction limited spot so it collects the fluorescent signal from a single point at a time within the sample so therefore it generates images one pixel at a time and that is called as point scanning and after this point scanning a point scanning it covers the entire area and that is the area scanning so first the point 
and then cover the entire area. So that is one plane. Then if you go beyond that, in the second plane, then it will do the same thing again, point scanning and then take the entire area. So you have images in different plane. And then eventually by using the computer assisted softwares, you can combine them all together to get a three dimensional structure. Okay, uh, so, so this is, uh, so what basically it does, it scan the images. So I'm just repeating the same thing. Okay, so just to, just to, just to keep you on the same page that it scan the images by eliminating individual regions in sequence. So first scanning the elimination and that elimination is again very selective because you are supporting with the laser light and laser light is collimated, which is coming in a parallel fashion and it is a selective elimination. And then you are scanning the detection, which is again selective because you're using the pinhole at the end of the, or before the detector. So by that way, this pinhole aperture in front of the detector at a plane that is conjugated to the in focus plane. And that is the illumination spot and the pinhole aperture are simultaneously focused on the same, same spot. So that's why you are getting the images, which are, you know, relatively more resolved and it is basically represents a thin optical section. So instead of individually or physically making those thin sections, you can use the same tissue and do the point scanning, then area scanning, and then changing the plane, you can do the optical scanning for getting the resolved images. Uh, so this is what I was telling uh, that these are the same image. So this is a tissue structure, you can say, and the images are done in such a way that this is the one plane in which there are various points and each points are scanned and point by point it is scanned the entire plane and then the another plane, the another plane by that way. So this is just a one X, Y direction. So two dimensional image, but when you stack them together, it will generate like a three dimensional structure. So this is just a representation of showing how you can capture 2D as well as 3D images. So when, and so, so laser scanning is generally used or that is the most important part in the confocal microscope because it provides a light beam that is uniform. It is going into this specimen and scan the entire area and then deflecting the angle of light, which is coming out from that uh, specimen that is called as D scanning. And, and for doing these things, the same, you know, uh, deflecting, or you can say uh, dichroic mirrors, which are used for, for these kind of uh, uh, arrangements which allows the illumination as well as the same time function as a collection to collecting device. It works both as a fast axis, axis because it works in a horizontal direction. And then if you want to go to the axial direction, it will also allow to scan the entire image in a different plane. And it produces a raster pattern. So raster means one dot, one dot, one dot, and then coming to this, then coming to this, then coming to this. So it's a kind of zigzag but it is a pattern based. So it's a raster pattern. So you do point scanning and then do different points, then come back again, the same point and then do scanning. So this is in the one plane, then you select the another plane. So one plane represents your 2D image, which is in the X, Y direction. And if you go to the next plane, then it will have a three dimensional structure that is, that is represented here. So X, Y, Z plane, and it is called a Z stacking. So this represents Z stacking, and it is one of the important feature of confocal microscope, which requires software assistance. So every uh, microscope or every confocal microscope comes with a, their own uh, software, which has the capacity of, you know, collecting XY images, as well as combining all those XY images of the different planes into a three-dimensional structure. So uh, if we have to see more about the different component of confocal microscope, so there are, you know, various modifications have been done over the years, and, but these are the major, you know, component which can be seen or which are available in various confocal microscope. First is a laser, which acts as a light source, dry chroic mirror, which I, uh, which generally, you know, they tend to focus the light coming from the laser to the objective lens and then collecting the light coming from the objective lens to the uh, detector. And oscillating mirrors, again, they changes the path of light. Or so that you can change the point of focus. Objective lens, again, it is very common in all the type of microscopes, confocal pinhole, which is the important part and detector. So detector can be various types, depending on the configuration of various uh, microscopes. In older version, generally use PMT and nowadays 
CCD or charge coupled devices are available, which basically amplify the signal that you collect. So in fluorescent microscopy, you have illuminated uh, samples, images, because you collect all the light. But in this case, the limitation is because you collect very narrow path of light, which is in focus light. So ultimately, your illumination will not be too much. So for that, uh, for that, there is a trade off or maybe there is a compensation made by PMT or CCD, which amplifies the signal so that you can see more, you know, illuminated sort of uh, images with proper resolution. Uh, so laser, so I will just brief some of the part of laser or maybe some of the part of different component of this uh, uh, confocal microscope. So gas lasers are generally used. These are conventional type of uh, lasers, which contains these are the, you know, these are the vacuum tubes in which uh, gases like argon and triptans are there. They produce uh, various photons and diode and solid state lasers are now coming up. And these are more stable, more uniform. They produce less heat and it produces a broad range of visible wavelengths. So it starts from 300 nanometer to going up to 1000, maybe more than that but they are very specific. So you get the laser, which has 400 or maybe green, green, green laser, red laser, or maybe, you know, blue laser sort of thing. And, and three most commonly used laser are 488 nanometer, 568 and 647. So they are blue, green, and red laser. So it emits a particular wavelength and then fluoro, depending on the fluorophore that you are using in your specimen, it excites them at that wavelength and it emits uh, the wavelength beyond or maybe higher than that. So that's why you see the color changes. All ion laser exhibit excellent beam quality and it can be you know, purchased from various sources. So this is just a table which summarizes whatever the uh, laser system available, you know, most frequently used. Um, similarly, the pinhole, again, it acts as a spatial filter at the conjugate plane image. The main idea of using pinhole is to to minimize the out of focus light or maybe reducing the out of focus light taking in focus light to the diffraction limited imaging system similarly objective lens they are also very important component of any microscope in any sort of microscopy experiments uh, so and they are mainly you know uh, uh, characterized by the numerical aperture which is basically their ability to you know resolve the images based on their <clears throat> cone, light cone or the depth of the angle. So resolution is basically determined. So this is the lateral resolution you see in the horizontal way and axial resolution is the upside down resolution. And these are specific formula. So if you know the numerical aperture of an objective lens, you can get an idea of how much resolution you get. So the more the numerical aperture, the better the resolution is. So the value which is, which will be here, if it is less, that means it is, it can resolve two point very clearly. So the less the number of this will be better the resolution is, which is primarily done by increasing the numerical aperture of the objective lens. Similarly, there is always a trade off between changing the pinhole size. So if you decrease the pinhole size, the light intensity, which is coming to the detector will be very less or the collection of light will be less. So ultimately it will reflect on your image because that image will not be bright. So some of them can be managed by the photo multiplier tubes. But eventually, uh, there is always a trade-off. So if you increase the pinhole size, you will collect more light, but that more light will also have your out-of-focus light. So that is the major issue. So it's always, you know, when you do it, you will realize it. The only point that one has to consider that, that, the, the, that the AD unit, so there is a specific term, I don't know how much, I don't think that I'm making it too much complicated, but so this airy disc is basically representing. So here is your specimen. If you put a light on this, the light will be emitted and it will go in a spiral direction like this, the cone shape. But if you increase the numerical aperture, you see this will become very sharp. So the numerical aperture will take only this part. So the image will be magnified or maybe more resolved compared to this one. But if you want to decrease the pinhole size, so out of this also, this, it, no, if pin, pinhole size is very small, then it will detect very limited amount of light from here. And it will again amplify the signal or maybe better resolve the uh, light collection efficiency. Similarly, detectors are, they are used for amplifying the signal and they are composed of photocathode and a chain of electron multiplier. So whatever the signal you are getting in the form of light from your uh, pinhole, it is magnified and turn into a digital format 
either by camera or through these multiple diode or dynodes. So, so, so this is that these are different components. So we discuss about the basic principle of confocal microscope. What are the various component of confocal microscope and how, what type of confocal microscope we have. So, so you know that there's a point scanning and then we do the area scanning. So how we do the point scanning, either you can move the samples or maybe you can move the optics. So there are two ways by which you can scan the entire area. One by moving the sample, that is also possible but optics are fixed. But in another case, you can move the optics and keep your sample at a stationary phase. So these two type of things can, you know, these are available or so the moving sample and fixed optics generally are the old configuration. And I think nowadays only in the industrial part they are used, but generally in routine labs or, you know, other biomedical research, uh, normally the stationary sample and moving optics are used. So, and, and so if we talk about the stage scanning system, the advantage of using those, you know, uh, stage moving system that they have identical optical property and age artifacts are reduced only because they use the central axis of the objective lens. The problem is that it is very difficult to manage the mechanical uh, precision because your sample is moving. So sometimes you lose the focus or the plane and mismatch occurs. So that is the motion artifacts or rearrangement of tissue because of the force involved in the translation. So um, nowadays, most modern microscope, they are based on the moving sample, sorry, uh, stationary samples and moving optics. They scan the illumination beam across the stationary samples and they are controlled by a costo optic tunable filter. So that is very important because you, know, you are using laser. So laser are switch on and off and on and off again and again in a very friction of time. So that is very important. And, and these kind of systems are used very frequently. And there are two major type of uh, uh, modern microscopes that are used. And I would like to just brief some of them. The one, first is the laser scanning confocal microscope and second is spinning disc. So if you look at the laser scanning part, it is <clears throat> again the point scanning. So whatever I discussed previously, they are mainly towards the laser scanning part. So in this case, uh, laser light is directed onto a pair of scanning mirrors. So again, your sample is stationary. You are having mirrors which are diverting your light towards the objective lens, like in this case. So you have a laser light. Here is the dichroic mirror. And these are the scanning mirror, which allows your light to focus through the objective to a specimen. And from this specimen, you do the point scanning. And then point scanning, after point scanning, you do the area scanning. And if you change the focal plane, you can also do X, Y, and Z type of scanning. So that's why you can collect. So each focal plane represents your optical section. And as, as you go deep down by changing the focal plane, you can get the images across the different sections of the uh, sample. So that allows you to take the three-dimensional structure or three-dimensional images of the uh, specimen. Now the advantage, they are very useful in terms of optical sectioning. You don't need to manually sectionize them to a smaller size or thin sizes. It can provide you resolution up to 120 nanometer. And it is very useful in terms of 3D imaging. You can use various fluorophores of different colors. And depending on the laser that you are using, you can combine two or three different colors together for multicolor imaging. It can be used for live cells or live tissue as well as fixed tissues. Um, the, the major point is again, the pinhole size, which can be set to the optical section, thickness and region of interest to these selections. Limitation again, because the, these kind of microscopes, they generally do the point scanning and then area scanning and then the different plane scanning. So it takes a lot of time. So you have to be very patient if you're using laser scanning microscopes. Sometimes people spend hours and hours in the confocal room to get the good quality images. So imaging speed is slow uh, because of the configuration of this kind of um, microscope. Sometimes laser is also because a very strong laser light, so it can also damage the tissue. So it takes time and the point, if it is, if it is taking you know, deeper tissue imaging, then the light is focused for a longer period of time on a particular plane. So you will have more photo bleaching or lose of your fluorophore uh, colors. Excel resolution, light penetration, collection in thick samples. So again, it's not that confocal if you're using, you can, you can scan or you can image 
any number of thick tissue, but it has a limitation. But generally, one 20 micrometer to maybe you know 150 micrometer size or maybe a little bit more than that, you can do it. Nowadays, there are more advanced advancement in the laser method as well as multi-photon or two-photon system, which can use the deep imaging of the uh, specimen. So this is about the laser scanning confocal microscope. The second one is, so in that case, we were doing point scanning because it is taking too much time. To avoid that, what they did, that they point the multi-point scanning system. So at a time, you are scanning the entire area by designing your pinhole or your lenses in such a way that it can scan one at a time, the entire plane at a time. So for that, they have a uh, airy disc or sort of, you know, a spinning disc sort of arrangement in which you have a pinhole-like structure. So this pinhole was originally identified by Paul Nipkow and, and they designed certain metal disc with area of 1% of surface, which consists of fixed width hole arranged in the outwardly spiraling tracks. So basically the light which is coming through a uh, through objective to the objective lens, they put a pinhole like structure. So, so they put the micro lens first. So this is a laser light is coming through. They put the micro lens and that is also aligned with the beam splitter. And from there they have a, so your sample uh, is eliminated. And when it is coming back, these pinholes, because this is not a single pinhole, but is a range or maybe a ray of pinholes. And from this, they can scan relatively bigger area at one time. So that is the advantage because they are relatively faster system and every part of image is scanned as a disk turn. So they take less time than the point scanning and the area scanning, which were done in the laser scanning microscope. And this is just one of the example of, you know, common name, which is uh, used for spinning disk confocal microscope is a tandem scanning disk confocal microscope. And it is a, it is a, it is advantages because it has a high rate but again, disadvantage, it is very expensive and very few labs may have this kind of instrument. Um, relatively low light dose and the fact that sample does not have to be moved through the illumination. So it main advantage is that it had a good scanning speed. You can scan the entire area within relatively less time. And the limitation again, you don't have pinhole that you can adjust. You cannot change the size of the pinhole which is available with the laser scanning microscope. But in this case, because these are the metal disc and it is the fixed pinhole size, so you can't change too much. Artifacts also are there and <clears throat> crosstalk from multiple pinhole in deeper samples. So there are always limitations with certain microscope. And based on these two different microscopes, there are some other, you know, hybrid scanning confocal microscope, which required. So, so first one was the laser one, which requires only one pinhole and one point scanning. Then they moved to the spinning disc. Now what they did, instead of having a ray or out swirling sort of uh, uh, pinholes, they designed a total slit. So there is a slit like a surface, which contains a rectangular slit to reject out of focus light. So instead of that uh, circular ring, they designed the rectangular slit, which has those pinholes and it cover most of the sample in one fleet. Basically, this is just a combining both of these uh, uh, methods and providing a rectangular slit so that you can cover more area in relatively less time to avoid the rapid photo bleaching and the uh, lower resolution. And further to that, in other system, they have incorporated both of the systems. So depending on your requirement, you can use either pinhole system, single pinhole system, as well as you can switch to the slit scanning mode. So there are variations based on the applications, different types of, you know, requirement, but these are some of the modifications which are available with uh, hybrid scanning confocal microscope, which contains the feature of both spinning sort of uh, microscope as well as single pinhole uh, confocal microscopes. Uh, so this is one of the example of Z stack that we were discussing uh, that it can take the images in three dimensional. So from one, to four and to eight to 12, these are different optical sections. So each individual image reflects a single plane. And then if you go deep down, it will reflect another image. So this is basically arranged. These are taken as an optical section by using two different laser system. One is 488 nanometer, which is green channel. And that is 543, which is red channel. So, so um, total 48 images were taken and that represents a uh, stack of, sorry, the 
the thickness of at least three micrometer in size. So that if you if you go from up to down, every slice has a three micrometers changes. And if you combine all together, then you will see the images like in number eight. So if you combine all them together, you will find all the molecular details available with this kind of structure. So these optical sections, you know, they are easily be done by using confocal microscope. But the principle would be the same that it will allow it will have first the point scanning and then in a raster pattern, it will take the total area scan and then that is your two dimensional imaging, then it will go further into the optical section. So you change the objective lens size. So objective lens position, it will change the focus plane and then it will go further sectioning of that. So each section represents your optical. So each image represents your optical section. And when you combine them together, you may get a picture like this. So you have all the information available or maybe more resolved images compared to this. Similarly, this is another example of high resolution single cell imaging. So, so this is a, a, a cell, I think it's a HeLa cells. And these are stained with the a quantum dot, sorry, the, uh, yes. So there are fluorescent, uh, fluorescent particles that were used for looking at the their localization. So they use uh, a graphite quantum dots and they were trying to find out where these quantum dots are located, whether it is in the cytosol, whether it will locate to the cytosol or whether it will go to the nucleus. So then they, then they try to see the images and, and this area represents your nucleus part. So all the dots were filled the cytos with the cytosol, cytosols were filled with the uh, these quantum dots, only that area remains relatively empty. So by that way, they can say that these are more localized to the cytoplasm instead of nucleus. And these are the different sections. So this is 0.36 micrometer. This is 1.1, 1.46, 2.2 .2 to up to nine micron size. So these are the optical sections. And when they combine it together, they get a three dimensional view of the, uh, of the images. So you, they can twist it around and see which part is available, which part, you know, in which part they are more accumulated or maybe less accumulated. So these kind of play one can do if they have access to the confocal microscopy by using optical sectioning method. Um, similarly, if you want to know more about the biological process, it is also one of the important area. So these are the, some of the images of uh, cells, HeLa cells, uh, in which cells are stained with the mitochondrial stain, let's say, Mito tracker red, and and these are uh, the autophagy markers LC3 or FUND C1, and and these LC3 and FUND C1, if they localize with the mitochondria, that suggests that they are going towards the mitochondrial autophagy, or that you can call it mitophagy. So these images were just the co-localized images in the confocal microscopy, and with the optical sectioning, you can also see that how these red color, which represents your mitochondria, they are attaching to the green fluorescence, which is representing your LC3 or maybe the autophagosomes. So by that way, you can see the process of or biological process, which is happening inside a cell in a finer detail. Okay. Similarly, if you want to measure the, see, I'm discussing mitochondria because I work on mitochondria. So it's always close to me. Um, this mitochondria tracker, this is, so in my, if you look at the cellular mitochondria, sometimes they appear as a round shape. Sometimes they appear as a tubular network. So how do you will see either you can see them in the electron microscopy, which is, you know, very tedious, but if you have availability of confocal microscope, you can get the molecular, these kind of details by using, you know, a confocal microscopy. So the pattern that you see here, these are the tubular shape. Mitochondria. So this blue dye represents your nucleus. So these dyes represent mainly, or these dye basically bind to the nucleus, and and they are the these are the dyes, which is mitotracker red, which particularly stain the mitochondria. So you see there is a tubular sort of network, but in this case they are more fragmented, and this is again confirmed by another fluorophores, which is a plasmid which expresses a green person protein, uh, and then it is again again coming as a uh, dotted particles or dotted mitochondria. When they combine together, you see there is a yellow color uh, overlap with each other. So that that tells you that with confocal microscopy, you can get more details about the cellular structure, biological process, and various other important, you know, structural details of the tissue or specimen that you are using. So you can do it in the live cell also. 
you can do it on the fixed tissue also depending on the type of application that you want uh, so the advantage is again it can serially produce thin 0.5 to 1.5 micrometer optical section uh, through fluorescent specimen and it can range up to 50 micrometer or more so it can go up to 150 micrometer also it can also provide you multi-dimensional view in x y and z direction using multifocal or multicolor imaging limitation again nothing is perfect so it will also have certain limitation that whatever the wavelength that you are using by using various lasers that also limits it so you don't have lasers available with various uh, wavelengths and and laser are also very expensive so but generally they cover a very good range of uh, wavelength that we generally use in our day-to-day -day, uh, work and they are also harmful nature of high intensity so that irradiation of living cells and tissue can cause photo bleaching or maybe sometimes they cause bleed through because of the other overlapping fluorescence also this is very expensive and uh, fortunately we have in our institute i think hematology health confocal microscope and our department we also have uh, so it is again so so the clinical application remains you know not very not too much in this case but still you know uh, people use the confocal microscopy to get the more finer detail in the tissue uh, although the fluorescent microscopy would be sufficient in terms of diagnosis of certain disease like dr amita was discussing earlier confocal is more related to understanding more detail about the structure and the uh, cellular process that we can use okay so so these are some of the important so i can give you the slides you can read it the only thing is that there are certain so this is the point where if you come to the demonstration part maybe these things will help so once you actually do the confocal microscopy you will know what kind of changes you can make in terms of improving the resolution so some of them are listed here maybe you can go through it although i have mentioned some of them already that objective lens is important so you don't need to you need to use higher numerical aperture uh, objective lens pinhole size again reducing the pinhole size will increase your resolution but it can also reduce your you know uh, illumination so there is always a trade off trade uh, trade off between the pinhole size as well as the focal plane um, depth penetration that is a uh, you know how deep you can go to the tissue to get a better better uh, picture so generally uh, they are good for 150 micrometer but if you have a thicker tissue you better use you know multi photon uh, microscopy or two photon microscopy which will provide the better penetration power and can give you PMT gain again to improve the signal, laser power, fluorescent concentration. Like if you use too much fluorophore, maybe your uh, your sample will be illuminated too much, but at the same time you will lose the resolution. So always use less amount of uh, fluorophore uh, so that you can get better clarity. Although less amount sometime you know uh, doesn't give you more illuminated light. So that that is always thing that need to optimize. Uh, imaging again, it is. It is a very Hercules task if you have to do multiple samples. So it is always advisable to prepare the sample first, keep them in you know four degree or whatever, whenever. If that is the you know the, you are using the antibody based methods, immunofluorescence method. But if you are using the live cell imaging, you have to limit the number of samples because for taking one image, it requires sufficient number of time. So uh, so in summary, confocal microscopy is a non-invasive optical sectioning technique. Um, which examine both living and fixed tissue specimen um, and, and, and it continues uh, with enhanced clarity and resolution. Uh, based on the principle, it is primarily based on the principle of uh, Minsky that is mainly the rejecting out of focus light through the pinhole. Adjusting the pinhole size can, can allow only the in focus light so that you can get a reduction in background fluorescence and also they improve in signal to noise ratio generally compared to fluorescence microscopy uh, this uh, uh, confocal microscopy is almost 1.5 times better than the wide field and it can also give you two dimensional as well as three dimensional imaging which is good for you know getting more detail about the biological process and it is a very powerful tool you know and day, day to day there are more advancement in the laser in the collector in the pmt device in ccd in various component of these uh, uh, confocal microscopes, which is basically, you know, providing new dimension to the research as well as, you know, um, other uh, 
compartment of the various fields and to limit the cell damage and computer processing speed you know storage capacity so all these things basically contribute to your uh, confocal microscopy uh, and these are some of the references that you can take and some of them are really very interesting especially this uh, third one which is a you know blurring beyond a pretty picture that is a very good one some of them i have taken from the online resources and if you are interested in demonstration please come to the lab after reading this demonstration part because this is the machine that we are going to discuss and so that you can have some idea before going to it okay so any question i would be happy to take